off a mountain as a child, abandoned on an island, becoming a mystheos, Cassandra and Alexios really haven't had an easy time of it. Luckily, we've got some tips to make life a bit easier for the ex-Spartans so you can start wowing, or terrifying, the citizens of ancient Greece with your stabbing skills. Here are 11 essential Assassin's Creed Odyssey tips to know before you play. Regularly upgrade, swap out and engrave your armour. When you first start off in Odyssey, you'll probably find yourself with some ordinary grey armour. Give it some time and you'll definitely find yourself stumbling across either some legendary or epic gear. The armour and weapon system works a bit like Destiny 2. You should swap out anything of a higher level, damage rating or armour rating than you currently have equipped, but there are a few exceptions. If you go to a blacksmith, you can upgrade your armour or weapons as long as you have the correct amount of resources. Epic and legendary gear requires harder to find gems and obsidian glass, but rare and common items should just require drachmae, leather and iron. Upgrading legendary weapons and armour is especially handy, as they jump up about 20 to 30 points per go and usually end up having higher stats than epic gear of a higher level. You can also engrave your armour and weapons with, surprise surprise, engravings, which can also be found at the blacksmith. These are basically mods which add perks and status effects to your gear, such as giving you an extra 4% assassin damage or an extra 5% chance for a critical hit. Most items already have engravings applied to them, which you won't be able to change, but you'll be able to add either one or two engravings to help you out whether you're stabbing, hiding or shooting. So, engrave and upgrade your gear and you'll find yourself in the shoes of a much deadlier assassin in no time. Don't be afraid to dismantle your armour. Yes, you won't get any drachmae for it, but you will get resources which alter in rarity depending on how powerful the item you're dismantling is. It can be a bit of a bother running around the world hunting wolves and deer to find leather or trying to spot chunks of iron in the ground, plus buying them from the blacksmith will cost you a pretty penny, so dismantling items is really a time saver. These resources are then at your disposal, so you can use them to upgrade weapons and armour. If you feel your heart rate increase at the thought of destroying your beloved armour, you can always choose to dismantle only the items that aren't worth a lot and you'll still be swimming around in a giant vault of drachme like Scrooge McDuck. Trust me on this, parrying is super important, especially in conquest battles. Tapping L1 and R1 simultaneously just when an enemy is about to hit you allows you to parry and, on a successful hit, makes everything apart from you go into slow-mo so you can get in a handful of attacks before the enemy recovers. It's tempting to just dodge attacks, but that's not always reliable and isn't a guarantee that you'll completely escape the attack, as I found out the hard way. During conquest fights, most of the time you'll find yourself facing two or more enemies at once, and it really helps you prevent becoming overwhelmed if you're a dab hand at parrying. Consider yourself warned. I'll rip your heart out. When you first start a new game in Odyssey, you'll be asked whether you want to play using guided mode or exploration mode. At first, exploration mode sounds hardcore, and I definitely imagined a UI-less world with no indication where you should be going or quest prompts, but that's really not the case. True, exploration mode doesn't have a waypoint telling you where to go, but as long as you get all the information you can out of the NPC in question, you'll get clues in the upper left-hand corner of your screen as to where you're supposed to be heading and what you're supposed to be doing. All that's left for you to do is to use your noggin and the map to figure out where in each region you should be heading. Once you get close to your target, you'll be prompted to send out Icaros to scout ahead, which means you're in the right place. The Cyclops. Time to have a little chat. As well as there being timed missions which will disappear after a certain amount of time, you'll know them by the hourglass next to the mission title, there are also side quests that don't have an hourglass that are linked to main missions. Miss them and they're gone for good. There's no way to tell which ones will disappear and which won't, but they're either loosely linked to the main story or have consequences which will affect the rest of the story. But the only way to tell if they have consequences is to complete them. Yes, I know that doesn't really help. Apologies. But hey, at least now you know. It might 
might be tempting to stick your implement of choice into the neck of any mercenaries or leaders that you come across, but every now and again it's a good idea to try to resist the urge. If you simply get them down to almost no health and then knock them out using the Spartan Kick, which deals non-lethal damage, you can then recruit them by holding down L3 when you're near them. That means they're able to join your ship as lieutenants, which gives your vessel special perks when you're out on the waves, such as increased ship health, faster row of stamina regeneration, that sort of thing. Get bored of them and you can always dismiss them, but it's good to have the option, right? Even if they did once want to paint the streets with your blood. Even if you stick to the shadows for most of your playthrough and very rarely find yourself at the end of a spear, you're going to want the second wind ability. This ability lets you regenerate 25% of your health and it's super useful. Why? One word. Conquests. During these massive battles you're unable to hide and slash or assassinate enemies, so you'll have to rely on your warrior weapons to dispatch your foes. Suffer too many hits when you're used to hiding in the undergrowth and you'll find yourself having to do the same conquest battle over and over again. To save yourself some grief, buy the second wind ability in the warrior tree as soon as you can. It's worth it for the conquests alone and it's the difference between a victory for your side and you throwing your controller across the room because you got desynchronized yet again. <laughs> For years we've had it drilled into us that camping is bad, but you know what? If you're going to go full assassin in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, don't be afraid to stick to the patrolling routes of guards, bandits, Athenians or Spartans. Even if you kill one and hide their body away, in most cases a friend of theirs will come and occupy exactly the same spot. That means you can sometimes stay in the same bush and just assassinate in the same location over and over again until the mound of bodies is spilling out of nearby vegetation. What a lovely mental image. Synchronization might seem less important now that it doesn't flood your map with handy markers. However, every time you sync, you unlock that landmark as a fast travel point and that's really handy. Assassin's Creed Odyssey's map is huge and following the main missions will soon have you travelling large distances, so being able to zip between synchronisation points to mop up unfinished side quests or track down cultists is vital. And because your ship, the Adrestia, is also a fast travel point, you can easily nip back to previous locations without losing your forward progress through the world. It's easy to forget that if you're running when you call your horse, you'll automatically hop on its back as he closes in and then he'll keep running without breaking pace. Most of the time the horses don't like it when you sprint and sometimes get caught out by obstacles. But for the most part you can whistle, leg it and jump on as you go. It saves time because you're already heading to your location rather than standing around and it looks so, so cool. There are a few things you should know about mercenaries. They're the bruisers that are sent out to get you when you annoy people enough. The more trouble you cause, like stealing and murdering civilians, the higher your rating and stronger the people sent out to get you. Mind you, there are a couple of other things to bear in mind. For example, you can discover mercenaries wandering the world and they aren't always out to get you. You're only a target if you have a bounty on your head. You can pay off this bounty on the map screen to send them away. If you don't want to waste your money paying off bounties, you can always take out the character sponsoring the bounty. Just look for a symbol on the map that looks like a money purse with a dagger through it. If you defeat a merc you get their gear, but be smart here, a mercenary's gear drops at the same level that they are, and as you take them down their rank shift and change as you yourself rise up the tiers. If you like the look of a piece of kit, then think about targeting characters higher up in the tiers than the one you're aiming for, which means the one you're aiming for will shift up some tiers and boost the level of their gear. It's also worth noting that using things like the non-lethal Spartan Kick means you can recruit them as a strong addition to your ship's crew. Hmm. This has been quite profitable. Maybe I should hunt down more mercenaries. The Spartan Kick in a high place will kill almost anyone. This is a big open game and there will be times when you face areas and enemies at a higher level than you. While you can settle in for the long battle, chipping away at their health and hoping you live long enough to see the results, you can also kick them off a cliff for an insta-kill. You'll need to unlock Spartan Kick from the warrior branch of your abilities, but once you do, you can use it to send anyone, whatever level they are, flying back into the air. And if you're somewhere high enough, the fall will kill them. 
So find a high ledge or castle wall and let gravity do all the hard work as gravity doesn't care what level you are. So those are the 12 essential Assassin's Creed Odyssey tips you need to know before you play. Let us know if you've got any other tips in the comments below, click the box on the left for more content from us and don't forget to hit the big button in the middle for more news, reviews, previews and features right here on GamesRadar.